Okay, I don't have, know how much time I have to um, cover this, but I'm going to try. Okay, so Screaming Trees Nearly Lost You. Never saw it until like a day ago. I never saw this video until like a day ago. Um, but there's a lot for me to see in it. Opening with this dress. Okay, so there's this link to this movie called Singles, and this is their most, probably was their most popular song in the 90s because of that movie. Um, and there's all these, this theme of these photographs in this. A lot of the, my photographs that I had taken went missing. Um, okay, so there's a lot here illustrating things going around with both Chris and me, so I'm just going to go through and find what they are, stop when I see it. So. This takes place in this Ellensburg Rodeo Stadium. What it looks like is, it looks like the Ferndale Fairgrounds where I saw a band called Highway 101 with my dad in 1990, I believe it was. Um, so there's the purple skies. So this, they've got this truck in here that looks sort of like my dad's green truck. It's a different color. This is a mint green where my dad's truck was more of a forest green. And it's not exactly the same style, but it's about the same vintage. And um, I think that there is a link there as well. So why is my dad's, that's a question that I have, is why is my dad's truck important? It certainly shows up. This isn't the only music video where this type of truck, this type of green truck shows up. Um... I have gotten a hint that maybe my dad used that truck to transport and hide a body. As difficult as that is for me to believe, but at this point, how can I even believe anything? I mean, how can I even think that I know anything about my parents? I clearly didn't know anything about my parents. Anyway, in 1990, he took, you know, I want to see this band called Hi Highway 101. So isn't that interesting? Here's Highway 101 again, which is also the Pacific Coast Highway, which is Highway 101. Um, the band Highway 101 was this country band, and I liked one of their songs. Um, but it's interesting that this band was founded by someone named pa Paulette Carlson, since my mom's name is Paulette, and my daughter's cousin's names are Carlson. That's an interesting link. And then there's also a guitar player named Jack Daniels. I didn't know any of this when I saw the band. You know, there was no Wikipedia or anything. This was just, they had a song on the radio that I liked. Um, guitar players named Jack Daniels. I think that's interesting because my memories of the scene, the show at the Ferndale Fairgrounds which looked like this, the stadium looked like this, I would have been sitting right here, um, was that um, I was drinking Jack Daniels, Jack and Cokes. And um, so that's all kind of interesting. Um, and maybe something, something more to that. I remember it being a disappointing concert because um, they sounded exactly like their albums. It was just like playing an album. And it's interesting looking at the band themselves that they were mostly studio musicians, session musicians. So that's not surprising then, I guess. They were more um, session musicians than live performers. Anyhow, so um, was there something significant about this? I mean, this, this is from 92, this video. And the lyrics aren't aren't super revealing. Can't you hear the distant cry calling me back to my sin? However, when I hear, did you hear the distant cry? It immediately reminds me of the song Sacrifice by Flipper. Which I think the first line is, can you hear the war cry calling me to enlist? So it's a pretty similar structure. Did you hear the cry calling me? And in that song, they say the demand is a sacrifice of your life. So I do think that that link is deliberate. And so when they're saying, I nearly lost you, they're talking about, you know, you nearly died. You nearly became a sacrifice that we've been trying to turn you into. So I think this was mostly a reference to the incident that happened in 1991. 
but it could have been any given incident because one of the things, the nature of the way this type of killing happens is um, often people have near misses before they're actually killed. Even Brett, he, you know, what the story was that he would jumped out in the street and the, a car missed him and then he jumped out in the street again and a car hit him. Um, Prince, same thing, so supposedly lost consciousness on a plane shortly before he died. Um, so it's this weird kind of chick playing chicken with your life that goes on. And the video itself has all this psychedelic stuff in it, like these psychedelic colors and everything, which, you know, to evoke, you know, because I was using LSD during that clip that incident. And they were exploiting the LSD to put me into a trance with mind control weaponry. Then there's all this construction equipment in a field. I think this is a hint about the funding. You know, these, so whatever they did to me up there on um, federal land on the Klamath River, um, people were making money from it. So I think what it was is people might have been placing bets on, I, that's what I think might have been going on, that they were placing bets on whether I would live or die and what would happen. And then it might have been like a big show and a bunch of people got to watch it live. That's what I think happened. Um, and I also think that possibly there was some sort of dueling mind control, or maybe there was an agreement made between two different groups how to conduct it. Like maybe I was brought out to the edge of the cliff, and then maybe the first group released control and the second group took over. Um, the reason why I think that is because I came to. And if I, I mean, I don't see why I had to come to. They could have just made me fall if they really wanted to kill me. But instead what happened is I came to and then I, I, I very carefully made my way back um, this treacherous ledge. And I mentioned before that w one of the memories from that time was actually removed and replaced so that I knew, I knew it was a real memory, which has to do with me testing out, trying to figure out, like, will this tree support my weight if I pull myself along with this small tree? And that might have even been something that, you know, I don't know. So, so clearly my mind was being carefully monitored and possibly, you know, I was given being given instructions, um, you know, not to my knowledge. But in any case, there was a memory returned to me about that a couple years ago. But I think that, um, you know, there's been hints, other hints that there was construction based on this incident. So I think that's what happened is somehow maybe people pooled money. This, you know, I don't know exactly because I don't know exactly how money works in this, but it moves money around, and um, but I think that that's what, why why the, you see construction stuff here. And then there's these red objects on the ground. Those are gas, old gas um, tanks. So I know gas and oil funding seems to be playing into a lot of these assassinations. This scene is interesting because here he is hanging up a, a poster. It says singles, right? So it's like a guy that has a job putting up posters around town. Um, somebody linked to Seattle tried to get me a job doing this like recently. I mean, um, you know, I was desperate for work. And I considered doing this 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 kind of work. Um, it's a nightmarish kind of job. Um, I'm trying to think of what year that was. It was not that long ago. It was probably 2011 or 12. Uh, and this person was linked with the Seattle music scene that that tried to introduce me to this work here in Portland, and. Um, I'm pretty certain he was sent by this group that includes Lanigan and you know all these all these guys who were linked to that you know what became the grunge scene. So they these guys have been manipulating my life, um, and they do link it to these videos, or they link the videos to the manipulations that goes both ways. So there's these, uh, let's see, abandoned building scenes. 
this I think a lot of the the video for Samantha links to this you know the fire the abandoned building all this kind of stuff and later on Samantha she's linking to that and some of the scenes in here here like this look how close all right the drumming I noticed some of the drums sound like um the air that you this song, The Air That I Breathe, some of the drumming style. I don't know if that's deliberate. There's a moment where um, the bass player, Van Connor, rolls on the ground and then they show it twice. So that seems to be symbolic of the twins, people being taken out in twos. And he's a big guy. He actually looks something like, you know, um, my daughter's cousin, Forrest. Chris is going to come back, so I'm going to have to stop talking about that. And then the logs. Woodsy was killed, and I think Woodsy's um, murder was linked to um, disputes over timber, partly. And the logs show up at 220 and, uh, let's see, in the 222, not in the 222. At 222, 223, you see his, he's looking into the water like he's on a bridge, and he's going to fall down in this, in this hypnotic water. And this, there's pictures of me very similar to this above a rivers from the early 90s I got like four tomatoes. <laughs> 